So, it seems like I always start videos this way. Maybe that should tell me something. Sorry, it has been way too long. I haven't been in a state to make sense, arguments, reactions, or even coffee for way too long. Although it won't be in this vid, I may decide to talk about the caves I have forced my way into. Uh, discuss the stench of the caves I have visited. Ugh. Show you pictures of the caves I've been in. <laughs> Use this idea for myself. Plato's Allegory of the Cave. I want to very quickly, for my long-winded butt, cover what it is and later use it for some other ideas. My plan is to make several videos using this allegory, and so explaining it to those who don't know about it is probably a good place to start. If you happen to be one of the freaking legends who already know this, then I hope you'll stay to correct me in the comments and hopefully get some use from later videos, or at least groan at my version of humor. And there is an idea which may help you explain science to imbeciles at the end, in the case that you find yourself speaking to people who don't understand science, like that could ever happen. An allegory is a story or poem or picture that can be interpreted to reveal a hidden meaning, typically a moral or political one. Plato was discussing the theory of forms, or ideas, but for now, the story. Imagine, if you will, prisoners being held hostage since birth, in a cave, like, like Neanderthals with the helicopter moms. These prisoners, being chained their whole lives, cannot move at all. They're forced to always face forward and stare only at a wall. No other movement is possible. Their basic needs are met in complete darkness. Behind these prisoners, where they cannot look, of course, is a fire which is casting light onto the wall the prisoners must look at. The prison guards, if you will, use puppets to cast shadows onto that wall for the prisoners to see. The prisoners can only see the shadows of the puppets on the wall, which they must always look at. Plato goes on to say that the prisoners will talk to each other. They will create names for the shadows they see, and knowing no better, will think them real, as opposed to shadows, as they would have no idea what shadows are. Remember, they live in darkness, except for these shadows being cast. The main point for Plato is seen here. The prisoners may name the shadow of a tree, tree, and although they will all agree on what they mean when they say tree, they're still only talking about a shadow. They're not looking at a tree as we know it. They've never seen one. Their concept of tree isn't real. It's only a shadow. And yet, they're still perfectly able to talk about trees. But my focus isn't really here. So let's move on with the allegory. Imagine we take one of these prisoners out. They may not want to go. Fear of the unknown, as well as the brightness of the fire, and later the blinding daylight. Plato says this person will try desperately to stay in the cave, and I think he's mostly correct. But the guards are able to drag this prisoner out into the sunlight. At first, he is scared and in pain from the lights, colors, and sounds. But soon, he becomes adjusted to the light, new surroundings, and is amazed with his improved understanding of reality. He first sees the sun and understands what shadows are now. He is elated and wants to help the other prisoners. He rushes back into the cave, but stumbles around in the darkness. He hears his friends, but his sight had adjusted to the daylight, and it's so dark in here. Excitedly, he recounts the real world above, with shadows and colors, the sun, everything. The other prisoners listen to their friend. But he has changed now. He seems crazy and is challenging everything they've ever known. Plato claims they would not let the man free them, that they would prefer to stay in the cave instead of trusting this crazy person. Plato says that if the man did break their chains, that they would kill him rather than being taken up into the light. So that's it. That's the allegory of the cave. I already mentioned what Plato was shooting at. He was attempting to use this story to talk about forms, or ideas. He wanted to show that the concept the prisoners had of book was not the same as the concept of book that, well, normal people have. That they were in fact wrong, or at the very least lacking, in their understanding of the concept they evoked when saying the word book. 
From here, he talked about what he called a form, or in this case, maybe a perfect book conception. There are a lot of very good takes on this, which are easily available online. For us, though, I just want to steal the allegory. A quick review, then. We've got prisoners staring only at a wall. Shadows being cast onto the wall. One prisoner is forced outside, but doesn't want to go. That prisoner is amazed and wants to help the other prisoners. The other prisoners are scared and resistant to leave. They prefer to remain staring at the wall. But for our purposes, we will make a couple changes to better reflect the scenarios I want to look at. We must admit that the prisoner who is forced outside may in fact want to go. I believe the majority would have to be forced, but I also believe there exist those who would boldly go where... Well, you get the idea. How do you think we got duck face in the first place? We might be able to agree that it is a good thing to want to go back and free the other prisoners, but that not all people would do that either. Finally, I think we should admit the possibility for some of the prisoners to be curious and potentially even convinced and therefore follow the other out of the cave. So not everyone would want the returning crazy prisoner killed. Well, everyone who isn't in the media, at least. That being out of the way, and hopefully reasonably clear, let's think about Plato's cave and see a quick adaptation for science. Science is the systematic study of the structure and behavior of the physical and natural world through observation, experimentation, and the testing of theories against the evidence obtained. So, a system to study stuff using experimentation and observation and testing ideas while using evidence, or a method, a rigorous and specific method. Science is a method of learning about the natural world. Let's toss science in the cave, just because I roll like that. The prisoners can only see the shadow of a politician. The shadow never moves, except when the prisoners make a sound. Whenever they make a sound, it quickly moves and then stops. The prisoners may decipher this connection and be able to move the shadow at will. Plato's single cave is going to be a little small for our purposes. Let's rather use Dante's Inferno. One prisoner is taken while sleeping from this cave to another cave. In this new cave, there is a new shadow on the wall. Our prisoner tries to explain the last shadow, but the prisoners here have only ever seen this shadow. Our prisoner tries to explain that it moved when noise was made, but this new shadow never does. They think our new prisoner is crazy, and our prisoner might agree, seeing as his previous ideas is useless or wrong. Change the caves yourself. Add more. Change the shapes of the shadows, the movement rules, really anything you like. Maybe four more caves with two new shapes, one of which moves from sound. Sixteen more caves with no new shapes, and all of the same first two movement rules apply. Sixty-four more caves with all new shapes and all new movement rules. Okay, enough of the damn caves. Look at the information our prisoner learned. Did it have value? Well, yes. When he was in that first cave, he understood how to make the shadow move. He made a connection, which worked based on his experience. As he changed caves, he learned that the connection he had made did not work for all shadows, all the time. He learned that his initial idea wasn't exactly correct. He learned that he was often, maybe always, wrong. He never knew the truth of the cave, the terrible prison guards with their light and shadows. But he was trying. That is science. I often talk to people who don't seem to get this. Science, just like our prisoner, doesn't claim truth. We can't know if we have found truth, and our prisoner, despite the numerous caves with their shadows, never gets to see the fire, nor the guards. Science is a process, and a method by which we come closer to truth, by failing to disprove our ideas. When we fail to disprove our ideas, we want others to try. This is the method of science. There are problems of induction. There are problems of scientists being human. There are problems of money in the system. There are problems with media reporting. But can we stop calling it reporting? What do they do? 
It isn't reporting. Narrative splaining. <laughs> There are lots of problems with the quote-unquote science we experience in our lives, but Plato would be the first to tell you there is a big difference between the idea or form of science and the science that we see in our daily lives. One is the only reliable method of understanding nature we have yet found. The other, well, that's just a shadow. <laughs>